It's your boy with Japanese Tutor, and we're coming back at it again with the London system. So I'm going to show you how to play the London system. I'm going to show you how to play against it. And you're going to follow what I do, and you're going to be good. Um, so for those of you who do not know me, I do uh, a lot of educational stuff here on Twitch and on YouTube. So go follow and subscribe if you want to learn some chess for free. Um, that's me. That's me. Uh, okay, so the London system, obviously. So, psh, okay boring whoever plays d4 boring whatever uh <laughs> so there are a couple of ways um that i like to play as a black so let's just flip this around flip board and so if you just want to like completely avoid the London, system, okay so first of all um you should play bishop f4 right after right right after um but let's say they play you know somebody that plays knight f3 there's this nice little sideline that you can play uh queen to uh d6 here it's a sideline um it's not played it's and it's good for blitz but if you want to like destroy your opening your opponent's prep and you know that they play knight f3 before they play bishop f4 queen d6 is a nice little surprise best move obviously is going to be c4 so just be careful about that um also why would you play that line? but whatever <laughs> i think it's actually very strong um gadikowski is a the best london player ever he just he's been playing the london system since what 1947 bc so yeah um anyways instead of that sideline let's say they play here so one of the main goals of the london is you want to have pressure on this line and eventually push here and create something on the queen side um so one of the techniques that you should use so let's say here to kind of blunt this is to kind of try to trade off bishops. Um, and it depends. So some people say you should trade off bishops. Some people say you shouldn't. Um, I, I'm, I just say that you should. Um, like if, an opponent, if your opponent offers the bishop trade, I suggest that you take it and you wait for the development of the G1 knight. So like, let's say they don't play that there just yet uh let's say they play i don't know uh i don't know let's make another move so uh we can just keep solidifying our center and until they play here some people say hey play bishop to g3 um i say capture and katakowski has shown this many times in practice that he captures and after queen captures um you want to then play f4 now you see the reason that we delay um developing the king's knight or the knight on g1 is because we want to play f4 in one go instead of having to move the knight back or move the knight away to give some space to it so we save two tempi here and we have a make some control of e5 and e5 is unpushable right now unless you have f6 in what if they go bishop f4 first yeah so exactly um, okay, so one way to combat the London, um, but you have to be comfortable playing d6. Um, so one line that I know is just d6, and if they play bishop f4, you know that they put bishop f4. Um, there are many moves, but there's a nice little move that you can play c5. And after c5, most London players are going to play e3 or c3. Um, if they play d5 trying to take some space, then we just play knight f6 and we get into a very, very good Benoni almost. Or, yeah, just a, an amazing Benoni where this bishop is kind of misplaced. And I think this is about equal. Um, if they take and, uh, you don't take here. So if they take, you can play e5 or you can say, hey, I'm not even going to do anything and I'm going to play knight f, um, knight c6. But okay, after e5, um, let's say, oh, if bishop here, then you just play d5 and you're much better. So that's a little like opening trap. Just you're better because um, you have two pawns in the center and you're going to attack this. There's no sufficient way of holding this because of this. And then a5, c3, then we play a catches b4, b captures, uh, so c captures b, uh, b4, and then knight of six. And this is a, um, an amazing 
Benko Gambit, except that this bishop cannot be developed on this line. And after something like g3, um, then we can just play d4 and have an overwhelming space advantage as black. So that's a little trap line that some people go for. Um, but again, like if you play d6, then they can just play e4 and then you have to be comfortable playing this. Um, I like to be flexible with my openings and I don't like to play pawns so much and I don't like giving my opponent an idea of what I'm doing. So um, in this case, after d4, I would play knight of six and then if bishop f4, then we're like, ah, I see, and then d6. Um, and we can go for some lines like this where they, if they play e3, we can play here trying to play here after knight f3. So that's another way to combat. And then we're going to play... Obviously, we're going to play here and stuff like that. So even even now, c5 is a great move. And you don't worry about the exchange of queens because you're going to go into some dynamic um, queenless middle games. Yeah, and don't, yeah, just don't worry about castling. Castling is overrated. So... Yeah, so if, again, so hold on, and if d4, d4, d6, bishop f4, um, there is something like this, it's not good, so just, yeah, c5, uh, if captures, then we have a multitude of stuff, if here, bishop g3 is probably your best bet, um, and if bishop d3, then we can just, like, try to keep harassing this bishop, saying, hey, you have no, no squares to go, and let's say, if h3, um just we'll regain the pawn we have a decent pawn center we can push it um and we're okay here also yeah i mean just i think this this is simple enough and it's it's about equal even though you sacrifice the pawn you're gonna get it right back and you traded basically a, a c pawn for a d pawn uh center pawns are worth more than uh the side pawns uh, just a little bit more Okay, so just make sure that you have that if you want to trap somebody in the London. So most people are going to play e3. Okay, and if e3, then you just uh, continue your development. And it almost looks like a Sicilian, except they didn't play e4. Um, and that kind of changes the dynamic of things. And let's say they just play regular moves. Then just h6 going for what we were talking about earlier. Like now that the queen doesn't protect h4, we want to play knight here. And the reason that you play h6 is that you can then play um, the bishop doesn't have anywhere to go. Okay. And yeah, so they miss our threat. Then knight h4 is extremely good. Or uh, after c captures d4, knight captures uh, e captures d4. And then we can play uh, here. You can always delay that. You can just play knight c6. But yeah, one of our goals is to play here. Let's say bishop b3. Uh, right. We just get the bishop off of this diagonal. And then we can develop our bishop to g7 and play here. Instead of h6, it's queen b6 a move. So let's go back. Instead of h6, it's queen b6 a move. Yeah, so queen b6 um, is probably one of, it's, it's a good move, um, but it doesn't go with the um, the line that I'm trying to say. Queen b6 is totally playable here, um, attacking here and putting pressure here. But after I think uh, queen c1, I don't think there's anything. Or you can even play uh, knight b to uh, d2 because the rook is maybe going to come here. You're going to have some issues over here as well. So like, let's say knight b2 captures uh, and then rook b1. They can't go here. If you go here, uh, then it should be five check. And it's looking kind of uh, it's it's playable, but it just fights better. Um, and if here, uh, maybe maybe just here. And if queen a five, maybe here. And white's better still. So queen b six, good move. Just I I think that just h six following the plan that we set before. Was pretty good, and even you don't you don't even have to play c5 here. Uh, you can just play knight of six. Uh, if e3 here and if there, then we can just play here, and we're good. If they're gonna play c3, takes takes. They have a grip on 
uh, on here, but we need to break this grip on e5. So g5 is a move. g5 is a move to kind of break that grip, um, or maybe bishop g4. Um, but I, I feel like we should try to break that grip, and also it allows us to play here and maybe even castle queenside, right? Because we're now attacking. Oh, and what you're probably thinking to yourself, oh, okay, what if they just take Japanese tutor? Okay, and then you can just like e5 to discovery, and after okay, so if the knight doesn't move, obviously, um, just we're developing our pieces, and if the knight does move, uh, let's play to something natural, let's say here, and um, then we can play d5 if f3, then we can just play e4. Now we have an overwhelming space advantage space advantage right and if here then just a simple f5 and we gave away a pawn right one two three four five six one two three four five seven but we have an overwhelming space advantage and i think black is doing just fine here um and i think it's a game and it's a very interesting game and these are these are the kind of positions that you should try to study and say okay what am i doing in these in these positions boomtown <laughs> open the files yeah open the files give away a pawn it doesn't really matter what you do um but yeah oh, actually i have to type i have to change the title of the stream to uh okay. bob's your uncle <laughs> boom bob's your uncle I, I i think i heard that somewhere maybe okay so let's go back um, and you're like, okay, what are the options for white if you play the London? So if you're facing this and you play the London yourself, um, so after here, bishop f4, um, I don't know about putting it here. So Gadakansky, um, or Gadakansky, however you want to pronounce it, um, plays e3. But there was a time where Magnus Carlsen played the London. And he didn't play e3 for a while, if at all. So it's a very, very interesting concept. Um, so what to do against this plan is now that we have the extra tempo. Let's say we're playing like this. Maybe now h3. Now, okay, you can play c5 or g5, um, but our plan is just to move the bishop anyways maybe bishop g3 or something and we can save this move maybe we want to play e4 in the future maybe we can play here or maybe we can play knight c3 oops not knight c3 and then play e4 and try to play in the center so i kind of like his idea because in the london one of the main breaks is an e4 break and you should kind of like try to build up your forces to make that e4 break possible but what if it's possible in one move which is kind of like the similar idea to the accelerated dragon where instead of playing d6 um to play d5 eventually you save that tempo and play d5 in some lines and that's one of the main premises of the accelerated dragon um so i really like magnus Carlsen's idea in this opening so um yeah um, i hope that you guys were able to take something away from this um and Thank you for all the fans. I received some mail saying, hey, why aren't you doing any more YouTube videos? And I'm sorry, I haven't been on as much. I had a lot of stuff in life, but I'm back. I'm back and thank you for being here. Um, I really appreciate it. And if you did like it, hit that like button and consider subscribing. I have a lot of good content um, and other playlists as well. So thank you. And